Thanks to Qualcomm Technologies Inc. for sponsoring this video. Every year we get countless devices that all try to accomplish something different. They have different cameras, different designs, different screens. But one thing they all have in common is the brain inside. Snapdragon processors are used in millions upon millions of devices. Uh, and it's what lets some of your favorite products just straight up exist and be things. Uh, and every year, the new version is really a suite that's mostly been the case. And Qualcomm Technologies Inc., and I got a soft spot in my heart, was kind enough to bring me out to Hawaii to attend Tech Summits and to experience what these new Snapdragon processors can do. They also gave me the chance to hang out with some of my friends that I haven't seen in a very long time. I, mean, I can't remember the last time I went somewhere by myself. My wife was supposed to come. She couldn't make it last minute. So here I was in Hawaii with my fellow geeks checking out the latest processors, trying to sort of nerd out on new tech that's coming, all the while with palm trees, bird singing, and occasionally a tropical drink in my hand. So before I get into all of that, it is the giving season and I wanna keep our season of giving going. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting the channel. We've got a $500 American Express gift card that you can win. All you gotta do is give the video a like, leave a comment down below on what your favorite Snapdragon feature is. And be sure to leave your social handle in the comment so I can contact you when you win. It'll run for 10 days, open anyone in the world. All the information that will be in the description. So this year, Qualcomm shaking things up. They're doing it a little bit differently. They're going to a new naming scheme. Last year, if you remember, we went from the Snapdragon 865 to the Snapdragon 888. So you might think the next would be 889. It was not the case. Um, they totally changed the complete naming scheme of the Snapdragon processors. And it's to bring the entire line of processor together and make them generally seem more streamlined. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. It's a bit of a mouthful, but this is the top end of their line. And the goal here is to bring the best of computing, gaming, connectivity together. There are a few different areas Qualcomm focused on with the launch. And there's a few that got me the most excited. And if you've watched any of my phone reviews over the past like two years, it should not be a surprise. Uh, camera upgrade. Getting a better camera system, at least for me, has been one of the main reasons to choose a new phone. It is hands down the most important part of devices nowadays. And it's also been the biggest way for manufacturers to differentiate themselves, what they can do. Uh, and Snapdragon is pushing the limits pretty significantly on what's possible with cameras in our pockets. This is another aspect of the way you don't think about the processor, but the processor is what enables all these just generally bonkers camera things that we've seen. So Qualcomm had a few different reference devices that were set up there. Got a chance to check out one that was showing sort of a new take on Panorama and sort of what it could do for stills and sort of see it happen live instead of having to sort of do a little bit of this action and then hope you got a good picture. Being able to actually see the full panoramic in a live preview like you would taking any other picture. That was awesome. Obviously phones now have multiple cameras on the back. Qualcomm was showing off how you could get live previews from all of those cameras at the same time and then pick the one you want. That was really cool to see. We also got a chance to check out some new motion blur effects. We saw motion blur happen in video. But everything that enables this is the technical stuff. So this is the first 18-bit ISP in a mobile processor, and that's gonna allow for what you'd expect, more data processing to get like extra nerdy, over 4,000 times more data. And that might not mean much to you, ISP and all that stuff, but 4,000 times more data should mean something. It's a lot. And what that's gonna lead to is features being able to shoot like 240 photos in one second at 12 megapixels. It's actually 3.2 gigapixels per second if you wanna go ahead and do that math. Uh, it's hard to even like conceptualize how many photos that is, but the actual capability on your phone to do that has not been possible uh, before. And because of all that data capturing and processing intensive things that's happening, there's also support for a new mega night mode. You can capture more light in darker conditions without any blur. And that's awesome. One feature that is though, looking forward to though, uh, is 8K HDR video from a phone. Uh, Snapdragon enabled 8K on phones in the past, but now you get excellent HDR with that video. So it should look way closer to what you expect from sort of the really solid 
1080p 4K video, but now just with more resolution. I had a chance to see this. And really, to be honest, Snapdragon platform is a reason for most Android phones has sort of gotten the ability to do these new things. The reason that they had 8K last year was Snapdragon. You'll never hear the OEMs talking about it or sort of flexing what their processor is capable of. They like to take credit for it themselves. Um, but Snapdragon and the processing that Snapdragon is doing and that Qualcomm has enabled is really the secret sauce behind why Android phones have become so amazing uh, at stills and why the video has taken such huge leaps the past few years. So most of the time there I spend asking questions, checking out the platform, going to very delicious dinners, uh, and get a chance just to, to talk and be able to see not only what phones people are using, but why they're using those phones. So one thing that people were interested in was gaming. And that's sort of an area that we've seen just blow up recently. I'm sure you played a few games uh, on your phone. Game Pass obviously has enabled mobile phones to do a ton of awesome stuff. Uh, but gaming on mobile is one of the biggest growth segments in the space. Qualcomm does the GPU side as well. The Reduno GPU is gonna give you about a 30% boost in graphics rendering and a 25% improvement in power savings over the previous generation. Not only will your games look better, uh, but you can play them for longer. So there's also a new variable rate shading feature uh, and they're calling it VRS Pro. It's essentially just gonna give developers more control to their performance uh, of the game without compromising the visual and graphics quality. And you take all of that on top of the existing Snapdragon Elite Gaming features and I think this is probably one of the most exciting sort of prospects for this next generation of platforms being really optimized for mobile games. And if you play intensive games on your phone, generally you know they're really good for maybe a short period of time. Frame rates start to drop, battery life goes down, they start to get maybe on the warmer side. This is working sort of to address each one of those points to make sure you can play longer and keep those frame rates up, especially with these flagship uh, high frame rate displays. So that is awesome, uh, but Snapdragon's taking gaming next level. This is actually a dual announcement with Razer, and it uses the new Snapdragon G3X Gen 1 processor to bring kind of great handheld gaming to new platforms like this one. So right now this is just for developers to get their hands on and use, but even still, it seems like something that could super easily come to market. Uh, and it brings all the same features that Snapdragon is focusing on, like solid performance per watt, Great battery, 5G connectivity, AI, kind of all the things that you would sort of look for in a powerful portable gaming device. This thing was cool to see, and I probably look back on you know this event at the end of 2021. I think this is what I'm gonna remember probably the most. So aside from gaming, they're also showing off their compute platform inside of PCs with the 8CX Gen 3 running Windows 11. And there's a big urgency to get computers that boot up quick and are instant on and have the latest connectivity with Wi-Fi 6, 6E and 5G data. So you can use them virtually everywhere. And at the same time, not sacrifice performance and still have all day or even multiple day battery life. Qualcomm is banking on this third gen 8CX sort of being the chip that opens up that door. So they had some reference devices there to check out. There was one demo that I thought was really cool. I don't know if it's gonna translate to video. But they were actually taking noises out in real time. There was a guy that had a, like a noise machine that was playing uh, dogs barking and kids streaming in the background, both very relatable, as well as opening a bag of chips. And he turned on this technology, did it all again. All I could hear was his voice. It seemed a little bit like magic. I couldn't verify what was going on on his end, but on my end, I couldn't hear any of those things that I could hear before. I asked Qualcomm about this and they explained the reason the Snapdragon Compute Platform does this noise reduction so well is because they're leveraging what they're calling a Qualcomm AI engine that is built in. So you get the performance and efficiency needed to get this type of experience. That was really cool. And just sort of another real world use of this technology and sort of the processing power that you need to make things like this happen. There was obviously a lot to talk about, and that was only a sampling uh, of the stuff that I saw. But Qualcomm is building on their foundation and building on what the Snapdragon is capable of. And when you think about your flagship features in your phone, most of those are enabled by the processor. So when you hear things like 8K HDR and multi gigabit uh, on the uploads for 5G, those things matter. And you might not always think about them, but when they're not there, you miss them. 
And Qualcomm is positioning themselves and their processors to sort of take us into the next generation of what mobile devices are going to be. And where they're starting is with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. 